Hey everyone, it's Julie and I am here for another log where I just I want to share uh, some random things and what I've been up to, a little of this, a little of that. The first thing I'll start with, because it's in my line of sight, is this book right here, The House in the Cerulean Sea by T.J. Klune. I have had this on my TBR list for a hot minute and finally read it loved it. So charming. Such a charming story. It's about this kind of dowdy, uh, solitary, 40-year-old caseworker named Linus. And he works for the Department in Charge of Magical Youth. And he is assigned to this extremely classified investigation of this orphanage on this island and this orphanage houses six dangerous magical children and so he is supposed to investigate these children just to determine exactly how dangerous they are to the world and you know you follow him on this on this journey to, to this orphanage where you meet these delightful characters and you meet the master of the orphanage named Arthur. And this is a story about, about love. It's a, it's a story about not just romantic love, but uh, what it means to be a family, you know, a familial love and what, it means when you call a place home, what a home really entails for someone. And so I, there were a few moments where I got teary eyed. So, uh, it, but it's a, it's a really feel good and just a really special story. So I highly, highly recommend it if you haven't read it already. In terms of tarot, I have been focusing mainly on the Spirit Keepers Tarot. And I'm sure you're no stranger to what this deck looks like. But I, I've been taking a more laid back approach and learning this deck. Usually I'm the type to go balls to the wall. But for, for this particular deck, I, I wanted to not put any pressure on myself because there is a lot to learn. And I want it to be an enjoyable and fun process. So, and the best way for me to do that is to not put so much pressure on myself to learn everything all at once. So what I've been doing is every day I have been pulling a card and I have been just taking notes in this cheap decomposition notebook. Uh, I have been starting with the Little White Book and then moving on to the Book of Maps and basically just jotting, you know, whatever, whatever I feel is pertinent to me at that time, the details that, that stick out for me. And, and that's really it. And uh, I know that this is something where I'm going to be returning to this deck for further study once I finish taking notes on all 78 cards. You know, this is a deck that will, for me, require a good deal, a deal of time and attention to get to know well. And so that's why I left uh, the, you know, the other side of each page blank because I know I'm going to want to come back and jot additional notes on each of the cards at some point and layer layer in more information that I gain from the book of maps and my own readings with the deck. So that is what I've been doing for the Spirit Keepers Tarot. Another deck that I have been working with in a similar way is the Thoth Tarot. And so I, this is part of my 2022 intentions to learn about this deck. And so I've just been using this mini 
And I purchased the Duquette book. It's right here. And I've been, like the Spirit Keepers, you know, pulling a card. And what I'll do is, so the, the book is, it's chock full of information, yes. Uh, I find that at this stage, it's just not, I, I don't need to absorb all of this. And so what I did was I went online and I'm not sure if you're aware, but U.S. Games, they provide free PDFs of the L LWBs for their, their tarot decks. And so I just went ahead and looked up the Little White Book for the Thoth deck and just printed out the, the pages that had the keywords for each card. So I have been using that little guide to read up on the keywords and then follow up with the Duquette book. And once again, just taking note of the details that are pertinent to me at this time. So I'm certainly not absorbing every little detail of that book. And I don't know that I'll need to or want to. I'm just taking it kind of one day at a time because this for me is really, it's really more about just learning about the, uh, the Thoth and becoming familiar just with the broader strokes of the images and the meanings. And so far I've been enjoying that process. Again, taking a laid back approach. And it's been nice when I've come across a card and I could say, oh, I've seen an interpretation of that card in say the Star Tarot. Oh, I see, there's that connection there. So the Star Tarot is using this Thoth image as the basis for that card. And so it's been nice to kind of uh, discover those connections to some of the some of the decks that I currently own. And we'll see where this goes. I mean, it could be that that's all I really want from this little study process. It could be that I fall head over heels in love with the Thoth and want to dive straight in. Could be, we'll see. But right now I'm not necessarily called to like use the deck for readings or anything like that. I really just wanna familiarize myself with the deck. This next deck is fairly new to my deck library. It was a sweet thank you gift from a friend for helping them with their project. And that is Tarot of the Sweet Twilight. Now, this deck is still in order because I've really just been looking at all of the images one by one and reading the little white book to get a sense of, of the deck. And this is totally my cup of tea. I'm very enamored by the aesthetic and, and actually this little white book, which was written by Barbara Moore and the illustration is by Christina Benetende. This little white book is pretty legit, which shouldn't surprise me because Barbara Moore did write it and she's kind of known in the, um, as being a prolific published tarotista, but it's, it's provided some different and interesting interpretations of some of these cards, which I always like. So I've really just been having fun looking at these images and doesn't that look like Baby Yoda to you? Now I, or maybe just regular Yoda, like the old guy Yoda. I mean, I know this was published pre-Mandalorian, so it's not Baby Yoda, but doesn't it kind of look like... Anyway, so I, I'm looking forward to working with this more, actually doing some readings with it, and 
I am thrilled to have this one. This next one is She of Insight Oracle. This is by Renee from Meadowlark Mystic. And this is the only Oracle deck that I've bought in 2021, along with her guidebook, which is really awesome. She has like a full walkthrough of the deck and, and the guidebook, I think. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. I, I will link it. But in any case, uh, it's just... It's a really special deck. Here are the backs. And she clearly had some amazing visitations by these sacred feminine figures. And you can tell how much she poured into this deck. And for me, this is not a deck that I like use daily. So this is not one that I have been working with regularly since getting it. As a matter of fact, uh, the only card that I've been working with so far and that I have up on my, see that whiteboard there? I have um, some cards put up there so that I can look at them, look at them throughout the day as I'm, I'm working. But right now, uh, Jinju, She of the Pearl, has been taking space up there and uh, I've been working with her and it's um, it's pretty pertinent. <laughs> she is pretty pertinent and come she's come at the right time. So right now um, that's where that's where I'm sitting. I'm sitting with her. So this is not a tarot deck, but it is tarot deck related and that is this book right here, The Deviant Moon Tarot by Patrick Valenza. I broke down and bought this book and it's not cheap, but I've heard from so many people that this book is fantastic and it really is a game changer when it comes to working with the deck and understanding it more deeply. Uh, and so I decided to bite the bullet. I'm not too far in, but I have to say I have been really enjoying this book. I've been really enjoying it, learning about the genesis of the Deviant Moon and just the history of, of Patrick Valenza and his creativity and the dreams he would have as a kid. And oh my goodness, there's just, there's just a lot of interesting detail and storytelling in here. So I do not regret this purchase at all. I've really been enjoying this book. Okay, just a couple more things here. I just got this today. <laughs> I had a casual conversation with Sarah of Sunset Bout Tarot. You can catch that on my channel. And we, this deck came up, this deck came up. And so I decided to just go ahead and treat myself to a little holiday gift. And so I'm going to make this my kind of traveling purse deck. And you guys have seen this before. Um, I am already in love with this sheerly for the cardstock and the size because you know, decks this small, they tend to be harder to riffle shuffle, but because this cardstock is thin and bendy, I can riffle shuffle this deck. Already it's won me over for that, just that alone. So I I know that this is a keeper. And so I'm switching out the, the current deck that I have, which was, it's the every everyday tarot by uh, Bridget Esselmont, which is a completely fine deck. It's a little sticky. It's not quite rose petal, but it comes kind of close. And so uh, I'm definitely replacing it with this because I can riffle shovel this one. So I'm happy. And then finally, uh, this is not tarot related. It's kind of random, but I finished my very first 
Paint by Number Canvas. Uh, this was a birthday gift from a friend. What she had done was she pretty much just stole a picture off my Facebook uh, album of my cat, my dearly departed Juju. So she stole this picture, sent it off to this like paint by number company, and they created a canvas based on that picture. And so here's like the number map. Oh my God, I'm sorry, this way. So you can see that um, it, it, it felt a little overwhelming at first. Uh, I, I don't know that I could say it was necessarily an enjoyable experience starting out because it just felt like you're painting in these little splotches and you're not getting anywhere and nothing is happening. It's like you don't see any resemblance to the photo. But when you keep at it, yes, an image does, does slowly start to take shape. And so I finally finished it at the end of November and I will put in a picture somewhere so that you can see. Will I do another paint by number? I'm not sure. Maybe. 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 <laughs> so in any case, I hope you all are doing well. I might have time to do a VR or two after I come back from uh, the holidays. So that could come between or before New Year's, but I can't guarantee. But either way, there are some, a couple VRs I have in mind to do. Y'all are just killing it with these VRs. I can't even keep up. I have a list and I, I just can't even keep up, but I'm trying my best here. So until the next time, I hope you all are doing well. Much love, stay safe, and I will see you soon. Take care.